Good morning. A special welcome to all of you who are visiting St. Teresa's. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and join us singing our opening song, We Gather in Love, which can be found in your voices, hymnal number 291. Number 291. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear friends, coming together this Sunday, in this beautiful Mass, we come together to pray for ourselves, to pray for our family members, to pray for our relatives, to pray for our friends, and to remember to pray for those who have no one to pray for them. My dear friends, for our prayers, our needs, our intentions, for them to be directed to Almighty Father, our loving and heavenly Father, let us humble ourselves and ask for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sin in my thoughts, in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unit of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth, who have observed his law. Seek justice. Seek humility. Perhaps you may be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. But I will leave as a remnant in your midst 
a people humble and lowly, who shall take refuge in the name of the Lord, the remnant of Israel. They shall do no wrong and speak no lies, nor shall there be found in their mouths a deceitful tongue. They shall pasture and couch their flocks with none to disturb them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, sisters and brothers. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being may, might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And so, as it is written, whoever boasts, 
should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they are the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you, they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This is the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. This Sunday's readings are kind of inspiring, empowering, But at the same time, challenging. From the prophet Zephaniah, the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, and the gospel, the beautiful gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, is talking about Beatitudes. As I was trying to, to reflect, to pray, trying to penetrate, trying to penetrate if it's possible, but trying to understand, trying to penetrate the mind of God through the message that Jesus gives to us, to the crowd 2,000 years ago. And the same message is addressed to us today, to you and me. Not an easy message, challenging, but at the same time, inspiring and empowering. Imagine Jesus going up the mountain and looking at the crowds, different people from different corners, from different directions, from different races, cultures, with a different perspective, perspectives and perceptions and opinions and views. But Jesus is talking to them. Different social and economic status. Oh my God. And Jesus 
is speaking to them. And he goes, looking at every, that's why he goes to the mount so that he looks at everyone. And he's speaking it to them. And um, the Beatitudes are all about the values. They are all about um, our attitudes. They are all about the qualities. The qualities that we hold dear to us. The virtues. And the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians talking about the humility. Humility, I have read <laughs> from the scholars, humility is the mother. Humility is the key of all the other virtues. Humility. Humility. Being humble. I know that there are people out there, not even out there, but even among us, who do great things. But don't go out and start <laughs> sounding drums and singing. But with humility, only God knows what they do for others. God knows their heart. God knows their intentions. God knows their purpose. People argue, including myself, what, 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 what is the meaning of the beatitude? When Jesus says, help the poor, they were wondering, but how can the poor be happy? How can they be happy? Those who mourn, who are sad, suffering, how can they be happy? The meek, those who are hungry, those who have no justice, those who are thirsty for justice, how can they be happy? I'm pretty sure that uh, Jesus is not against uh, having good things. I don't think Jesus is, uh, is, is, uh, is against having a nice house, beautiful car, that can take us from one place to the other, from one state to, the, to another state. Driving comfortably, safe trip, go back safely. No. After all, God loves us. God loves us and He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be to have money. So that we can take trips, we can we, we can take care of our families, we can take care of ourselves. God is not against um, having a good economy. But if the economy, the wealth that I have, the good things I have, fat account I have, if it is at the expense of others, then ah, I'm being warned. If things take me away from being connected to God, ah, Today's message is a wake-up call to me and to you, to each and every one of us, my dear brothers and sisters. That's the meaning of the beatitude. These are the values that I find in the beatitude. This is the message, the great message that Jesus is addressing to us, is addressing us to reconsider, to reconsider our relationship with God. And find meaning in what we have, in who we are, to God. And depend on God and rely on God because God is the source of everything. God is the source of life. God is the source of ah, whatever we can imagine. That's humility, simplicity. Acknowledging that we are nothing without God. That we are nothing without God. Because everything comes from him and it will definitely go to him. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. 
And he also, he's also encouraging, encouraging us through the letter of um, St. Paul to the Corinthians where Jesus, oh, remembers Jesus, he knows the efforts that we put in, the efforts we put in, what we earn, what we gain. There is a saying, there is a saying that um, there is no gain without pain. And there is no sweet without sweat. And God blesses our efforts. It's not easy sometimes, that's why. It's not easy, my dear friends. Sometimes it's not easy. But God blesses the efforts that we put in for us to be who we are and to have what we have. But acknowledging that God is the source of everything, relying on him and making him the center of everything. I know out there, there are people who mourn, who mourn because of their sins and the sins of others. There are people who are hungry. There are people who are thirsty for justice and peace. When others are preparing war and fighting, there are others who are quite there praying, praying for peace, praying for justice, praying for love. And those are Happy are those, happy are those who take dear, who makes God the center of everything. My dear friends, as we continue reflecting on this Sunday's readings, let us ask the good Lord to help us, but also to help those who are helpless. The Anawims, St. Paul comes back to them, the Anawims, the remnants, the outcasts, those who have no one to speak for them, the voiceless, those out there, to remember them, pray for them. If we have, if we are able to help, to help and make them rise, make them rise, Rise. But, but Jesus is also encouraging them. He's encouraging them not to give up, but to continue fighting. Not only falling and remain down, falling down, but to rise again and forge ahead in life. Let's ask the good Lord to send his Holy Spirit to help us so that we acknowledge and, uh, and recognize the values, the virtues, the qualities, the good attitude that are in the gospel and the message that is addressing to us through the prophet Zephaniah, through the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, and through the gospel of Matthew that is read for us today. May you rise, we confess our faith. I believe in one God.
Let us humbly take refuge in the name of the Lord as we offer our petitions. That Jesus, the wisdom of God, will enlighten the church for proclaiming the reign of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the righteousness of God, will guide world leaders in the ways of peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the consolation of God, will raise up the needy by our care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the sanctification of God, will make us holy and blessed in doing God's will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, the salvation of God, will welcome the dead into his kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we would be open to find ways to walk more closely with the Lord and each other through our participation in the upcoming Catholic appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for, uh, for the parishioners of St. Teresa of Avila living and deceased. But we also pray for all victims of violence in the city of Chicago, to Tavish Wallace, Charmaine Davis, Ahmad Jones, Corey Harville, and Radonna Johnson. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all who are in special need of our prayers, for those for whom we have promised to pray, and for those we pause to remember in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our loving and heavenly Father, we seek you in the midst of this assembly and in the heart of our world. As we call upon your name in these prayers, answer them for the sake of your beloved Son. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord.
pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for all of Let us pray. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord the Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, 
your church. Spread throughout the whole world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, bless our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, St. Teresa of Avila, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O oh glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father. And so we have the courage to say, all of us together, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are caught to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but in his word, my soul shall be here. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life.
nothing on earth could ever take your place. Now we see your sacrifice, the greatest gift, our greatest Good morning, everybody. My name is Barb McHugh. I run the religious education programs here at St. Teresa's. And I want to draw your attention to an insert in the bulletin this week, if you haven't looked at your bulletin yet. Father Frank is celebrating his 39th anniversary of his ordination this coming weekend. And after the 10 a.m. Mass next Sunday, we're going to have a celebration in the parish center. We will provide some brunch foods, but we're looking for contributions to like a dessert table, some muffins or cookies or cupcakes or whatever you guys want to bring. And please join us next Sunday after Mass for hospitality for Father Frank. Thanks. Let us pray. And nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mercy and go out to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Yeah.